Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at the GPD Win 2. This is a handheld Windows computer that has an integrated keyboard and game controller, and it's an upgrade to a version that they came up with about two years ago. This one has a Core M3 processor built in, so it performs a lot better than the old one did, and it might actually run some PC games that you might want to run in a portable format, but of course there are some caveats. Uh, the price on this one is anywhere between $700 and $750, so you can leave me a comment below about how overpriced this thing is. This is a real niche product, and it uh, serves that niche quite well. The company has been making these really cool handhelds for a while, and they have been able to deliver uh, things that many other companies have not been able to do. And if you're looking for something like this in a neat form factor, it's an option that you can pursue, and I think it's rather interesting. So that is why we are reviewing it today. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds, every single dollar of it. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this device is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is powered by an Intel Core M3 processor. Uh, it's a 7Y30 KB Lake chip. Uh, this is the same processor we see on the little 12-inch MacBook, for example, and a number of other Windows Ultra books. Typically, those are fanless devices. Uh, this one does have a fan. We'll talk a little bit about the fan noise and the thermals a little later in the video. It has 8 gigabytes of RAM on board, along with a 128 gigabyte uh, M2 SSD. And you can upgrade that uh, solid state drive if you want. You just take this panel off here and drop in a replacement drive. It is the M2 2242 standard. Uh, so you can probably easily upgrade the storage here for not a lot of money, but you cannot upgrade the RAM. So 8 gigs is what you get for life on this one. Uh, there's also no GPU built in. It relies on that Intel CPU's built-in uh, graphics processor. And it's doing okay, actually, as you'll see throughout the video here at running some modern games. It just won't run them as well as a computer with a GPU might. So for some folks, it may not be enough yet, but it's making progress here in this form factor. It has Wi-Fi, but it's A, B, G, and N only. It doesn't seem to support AC wireless, uh, but it does support the 5 gigahertz frequency in the uh, 802.11n mode. And it's got a 6-inch 720p display, and normally 720p would not be all that great on a portable computer, but with only 6 inches of screen size here, it actually looks really, really sharp and really nice. And that gives you the ability to have your games look somewhat nice on this device, even though 720p is likely the best performance you'll get out of it. Uh, you can, of course, hook it up to an external display and drive a 4K monitor if you want, but uh, 720p 20p here looks pretty nice on the internal screen. It is a touchscreen IPS, really nice viewing angles on it, uh, really looks nice. And it's actually pretty well built. It's got a nice feel to it. It's a little heavy just because it's got a lot of batteries built into it and the fan and everything else, but it feels nice in the hand, very solid, nothing really uh, flopping around on you here. You've got a good range of uh, display uh, adjustments here as far as where you want that screen to go. Uh, the top part here is metal and there's a plastic component here and the rest of the device is also plastic. Uh, but again, it really feels like a high quality device. And the game controller here on the front feels pretty nice, very similar to other GPD devices we've looked at here on the channel over the years. And my biggest gripe remains though, which is that these sticks do not click. You have to go on the back of the device here and push the L or R3 buttons to get that stick click replicated. And that's been an ongoing problem with these GPD handhelds. I guess the form factor just doesn't accommodate any kind of stick clicking. Uh, but they did add vibration motors to this. So if you have a game that supports vibration, you'll sort of feel it on here. It makes a lot more noise than it does vibration, but it does have a little bit of haptic feedback for games that support it, but it could have been implemented better. I think just where those motors are located, they're probably buried a little too deep in here to actually vibrate anything. So you don't really feel it, but you do kind of hear the motors going off. The sticks here double as a mouse. So if you want to go into mouse mode, 
Uh, you flick the switch here to the left and you can use these to replicate mouse movement. The keyboard is a lot like a BlackBerry keyboard. You can get some basic thoughts typed out, but it is certainly not going to be something you'll be banging out a novel on. Uh, they also tried to change the shape a little bit of the W, A, S, and D keys to make them stand out a little bit for gaming, but I don't think this is a realistic way to play any kind of game. So nice keyboard, not backlit, but it's good enough again for being able to interact with Windows. There are a number of ports on the device. On the back here, you've got a USB Type-C port. We have its power cable connected to it right now. It does support fast charging, so you can get that battery charged a little faster than a standard USB connector might do. Uh, battery life on this is about six hours to eight hours if you're doing some basic computing tasks. If you're playing games on it, it will be less and it will vary based on what kinds of games you're playing and how much they're taxing the processor. Uh, so I think realistically, you could probably get maybe two or three hours of gaming out on this thing before the battery goes again, depending on the game you're playing. So I would say it's probably in the neighborhood of what you might see on a Nintendo Switch in its handheld mode. And by the way, we'll be talking a lot about the Switch in this video because it's an alternative to something like this now. And I'll explain more about that in a minute. And then also with this USB-C port, it supports power delivery, uh, which of course is what it's doing right now. It also supports data and it supports video out. So if you have a docking station on your desk, you can plug in a single cable to this device and turn it into a desktop computer if you want. So that's kind of a cool thing you can do with it. Right here is a combo headphone microphone jack. You've got a full-size USB 3.0 jack right here. You have a micro SD card slot here for augmenting its onboard storage if you wish. And you've got a micro HDMI output here as well. So you can drive two displays out of this if you want. Uh, it's really a full-fledged Core M3 PC, so it can do anything a larger one can do. It's the same guts just shrunken down here. Uh, again, you've got a bunch of shoulder buttons here, that L3 button we talked about, along with your L1 and L2 buttons here. Uh, they're not analog. They do click, though. They feel pretty nice. And again, you just got to get used to uh, clicking that stick right there. So that's it for the overall hardware. I'm very impressed with what they've put together here. Uh, each year, they seem to be getting better and better at making these little miniature PCs. But let's see now how it performs, and given this is marketed as a gaming device, we ran a whole bunch of games on it, so let's do a little lightning round here and check out all of those PC games. We'll then come back and look at some emulation, and then after that we'll try to load up Linux on here too. So lots of stuff to do here, let's get to it. So let's begin with the game of the hour, Fortnite, which we ran at its absolute lowest settings here at 720p. And most of the time, the frame rate was very good. It was sometimes hovering as high as 50 frames per second, but we also were getting some lag and some spikes that would drive it back down into the 20 frames per second range. So not consistent, and I think you would see much better performance out of running the game on a Nintendo Switch, for example, but it does run on here and it is playable. We also took a look at Grand Theft Auto V, and there it was also varying the frame rate quite a bit. Uh, but we were seeing typically between 15 and 30 frames per second, most of the time in the mid-20s, uh, which is, by the way, what we usually see with these types of processors. So this is actually performing about where we've seen other similarly equipped PCs run, but in much larger form factors. So you can get a playable game of GTA V, just don't expect 60 frames per second. Uh, Street Fighter V we ran on normal mode, and we got between 20 and 25 frames per second, again at 720p. Uh, interestingly, we got less performance on the low spec mode of that game, which only came in around 15 to 20 frames per second. But Street Fighter V really needs to run at 60 to be really playable, in my opinion, so probably not the best game to run on there. Rocket League, we got between 35 and 50 frames per second, so that one ran pretty nice, again at 720p. And then the other thing we ran were a couple of the more uh, lower end games, kind of like the indie titles that you see on the Steam store. Uh, and we ran Shantae, which was a game that I could not get to work really all that well on the last version of the GPD win. Uh, this one ran much nicer, usually hovering in the 50 to 60 frames per second territory, so that was very good. I also ran the Pac-Man Championship Edition game. Uh, there we got between 35 and 40 frames per second, so it did okay on a lot of the indie titles that you might run across on Steam that you might want to take with you. 
Uh, but one of the things that I've been noticing lately is that a lot of those great PC games are now showing up on the Nintendo Switch and running at much better and much more consistent frame rates. And that might be the less expensive choice here to get some of these great indie PC titles portable. But if you really want to run something like GTA 5 or something, uh, this device is probably the only device that's going to get you there at the moment, which I think is worth considering if you are trying to get some of these games portable. Just be aware you're not going to get blockbuster performance out of it, and some of the really demanding games like The Witcher 3, for example, may not run at all. So you do have to maybe do a little research and maybe ask around a bit before buying one of these things to make sure that your favorite game is going to run on it. But I would also suggest looking at the Switch and seeing if that game might be on that platform and you can get in the door for a lot less money with one of those. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 5,491. And that actually puts it right in line with a two-in-one laptop from last year that cost about the same, the Lenovo Yoga 720. And you can see the graphics scores are very, very close between these two laptops. And even the CPU score isn't all that much off. So we're getting really good performance, about what we would expect out of one of these processors, yet in a very, very small form factor here. Now you could spend a little bit less and get a laptop with a GPU built into it. Uh, last year we also looked at this uh, Acer laptop, the uh, Aspire A515. That one has an MX150 GPU. And you can see the difference that you can get buying something a little larger with a discrete graphics processor on board. But if you want something portable, uh, this is really, really decent for its size. And it's performing about where we would expect it to given the processor it has inside of it. Not too bad. Let's take a look now at some emulation. So let's kick things off with the Dolphin emulator. And I found uh, running GameCube games on here, we can get them running at full speed, 100%, 60 frames per second here, uh, really decent performance and on par with what I've seen with other similar processors from Intel in this generation. So good stuff here in a handheld form factor. I did run some Wii games, namely like Mario Galaxy 2, for example. That one did not quite run as well as you're seeing here with the GameCube games, so we're still not completely there, perhaps, on some of the higher-end emulation, but uh, if you are looking to play your favorite GameCube games in a portable form factor, uh, this might be one way to do it. Let's take a look now at the PS2. So here's the PCS X2 emulator. Uh, we're running Burnout 3 right now. And we're getting performance at about 65 to 75% of a uh, full native frame rate here. So we're not getting a true 60 frames per second here. It's running a little below that, but it is completely playable uh, on most of the games that I have tried. There are a few, of course, that have some graphical glitches and whatnot, but it's, it's doable for a portable machine. It's performing about where other core M3 processors have performed that we've tested, so it's no better or worse than what you might get out of a larger device. So that is a good thing, but not a full 100% PlayStation 2 experience just yet. And we also tested thermals on the 3D Mark stress test, and there we got a score of 82.7%. That is a failing grade, uh, which means that you will see some lag as the processor heats up and the fan can't get that hot air away uh, quick enough to keep the processor from slowing down to avoid overheating. Uh, that probably explains why we saw some issues with Fortnite while we were playing that earlier. Uh, but one thing to note is that we also tested a laptop from TechLast with the exact same processor that was fanless, and we got very close uh, in score on that one as well, also about 82% or so. So you will see some thermal throttling here, but I think it would be a lot worse if it didn't have this fan. And we got a couple of other odds and ends here involving the controller, so you can see how mouse mode works here. When you're in mouse mode, by the way, it will also replicate the WASD keys on the left stick. So as I'm uh, moving the stick around here, you can see it typing out those letters. So you can basically replicate uh, running your fingers across the keys here using uh, the left stick. Uh, the mouse buttons are on the back here. They are the uh, L1 and R1 buttons, so a right click is an R1 here. And we also ran our usual game controller lag test where we shoot the screen at 240 frames per second and see how long it takes for a button push to register on screen. Uh, this came in between 80 and 84 milliseconds, so just a little bit slower lag-wise than the Nintendo Switch with its Joy-Con attached, but still not bad and I think 
definitely playable. And for those curious, it does run Linux. We booted up Ubuntu 18.04. We did run into an issue with the display orientation. It was in the wrong orientation, as you can see here, but uh, just about everything works. Sound, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all the main important things that you want running on your device did function properly, minus the uh, screen orientation issue. The touch screen also didn't work, but you can get Linux booted up on here if you want to run a third-party operating system on it. And overall, I think this is a nice little device. I mean, it's certainly expensive, but it performs as well as much larger computers do with the same exact processor. And it's very possible to get a lot of great PC games working on this thing while you're on the road, which I don't think you can say for just about uh, any other device out there in this form factor. This is a very unique device, something that uh, GPD has really uh, kind of carved out a niche for. They have another little pocket uh, laptop device too that's coming out soon, I think powered with the same processor that I hope to get in as well. So if you are really looking for a very tiny PC that has a lot of horsepower, uh, this is probably the thing for you. It's really quite neat how we've got here in this little <laughs> Game Boy size device essentially a very functional Windows computer. And if you're looking for something like this, it might be worth the price. But Again, if you are looking to take some of your favorite games on the road, especially some of these indie PC games that you find on the Steam Store, a lot of those now are showing up on the Nintendo Switch and run more consistently uh, on that platform for less money. So that might be a direction you might want to take, at least do some research before you uh, take the plunge on this. But if you are looking for a PC that is very portable, and I can see a lot of IT people making a lot of use of this thing, uh, it's definitely worth considering, and I'm really uh, quite impressed with how far GPD has come with these devices over a very short period of time, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with with their GPD Pocket next. So until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Bill Reiner and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.